All right, so you've saved your part, and uh, next thing we want to do is we want to make this uh, this model a digital prototype. And there's there's a there's a couple things that we can do to make it look uh, and, and, and seem as real as uh, the actual manufactured component. And the first most important thing that you're going to do is you're going to add some physical properties to this. And what you're going to do is you're going to right click in the browser on steeringknuckle.ipt and choose properties. Now there's a bunch of information that you can put in and should put into your components. Things like title, subject, author, maybe um, you know a specific part number. You'll note that the part number automatically defaults to the file name, cost, and so on and so forth. All of these are, uh, are properties that can be searched upon or extracted or, or placed into a title block automatically. So definitely something that you want to pay attention to as you go forward to production with Autodesk Inventor. Uh, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and add a material to this. And as you can see, this, this list of material is completely customizable. And again, you do that through your style libraries, uh, which there's a tutorial on the style, style libraries that you'll want to take advantage of. Um, but really what I want to do is I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say that this is going to be a black plastic. Go ahead and apply that and choose close. Now the first thing you're going to see is that the visual representation of your part uh, has changed and it's, it, it looks black and the, and, and the gray on gray kind of doesn't really make it pop just yet. If we want to make some maybe some marketing collateral or maybe you want to you know save this file out and send it to your boss, hey look what I did in the last 15 minutes. You can go ahead and go to the view tab and let's go ahead and, and enable shadows. By enabling shadows you're enabling not only the ground shadow but object shadows and ambient shadows as well. Yes, ambient shadows right inside of the graphics window of your modeler. That's typically something that's reserved to a rendering application, which is pretty sweet. Uh, I can also turn on reflections, and uh, you know, if I if I take a look at this, there's well, I don't see a ground shadow yet, but if I rotate around, oh, there's my ground shadow. Well, what's happening here is that uh, we've determined the front to be the X Y plane, and that may or may not be the front of the orientation of your model. No sweat, it's really easy to change. All you'll do is utilize the view cube to determine what your front view is and then just change it by right clicking. In this instance, the bottom uh, of the view cube uh, is what I want to be as the front. So what I'll do is I'll right click on the view cube and say set the current view as the front. And as you can see, my shadows will update. I'll change from a uh, orthographic to a perspective view. Again, making it look just a little bit more realistic. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a different lighting configuration. Now we have a number of different lighting configurations and, and we have actual image based lighting that we can bring up and call up right inside of the modeler. So this is, this is pretty hot. So if I pull this down and choose one of my favorites which is Old Warehouse, you'll see that it loads up that environment and places it into, places your component actually in, in Old Warehouse. So as I rotate this around, you can kind of see the effect of lighting um, bouncing off of the, uh, the material that you've chosen, which is pretty hot. But it's a really large environment, but I really like the lighting settings. So what you can do is you can actually change those a little bit. So if I go into settings here and change that from uh, image-based lighting, yes, I want to use the image-based lighting, but I don't want to use the scene in the image. I just want the lighting configuration. I can go ahead and choose that and you can see that it updates in real time. Now I've got the um, uh, specific control over the things like ambient shadows. So if I kind of amp up the ambient shadows a little bit, you can kind of see it change inside the model. Um, I can turn the brightness down or up, uh, the ambient light down or up. Uh, again, the specific control over these lights and the shadows and the softness and density is something that, that is really handy so that you can, you can go through and make your your part really look as real as possible. So if that's the view that I want and I want to go ahead and save this off as an image, maybe you know, email it to your buddies, your boss, um, you know, take a look at this, I can simply go File, Export as an image, and we'll just call this a, uh, a JPEG. I'm going to throw it on my desktop here as steeringknuckle.jpg, and let's see what it looks like there's your image. So within 15 minutes you were able to uh, create your very first part inside of Autodesk Inventor. You were able to uh, associate some, uh, some image based lighting to it to really make this thing pop. Um, I think you've, uh, you've accomplished quite a bit. So the next thing that I recommend doing is let's go ahead and close off the, uh, the part here. 
And now that we've, we, we've, we've kind of taken a, a, a real quick introductory, introductory uh, model through its paces, let's step back a little bit and, and, uh, and take a little bit of time to really understand what's making Inventor tick, right? And there's a couple of ways to go about that. Now, what I would recommend is that everybody go through the tutorials. These tutorials are fantastic. And I'm going to point out a few that specifically I think are going to, uh, to, to, to benefit you. So if I close out everything inside of Autodesk Inventor, the first thing that, that, that pops up is the Getting Started tab. So this is where I can create a new open change to a different project um, or uh, you know, get an introduction to the ribbon. But really what I want you to do is go to the Tutorials uh, option here and call it the Tutorials. Now the tutorial is going to give you access to the tutorial learning reference. And this is going to give you a tutorial on projects. Now projects are how Inventor, how Inventor reads uh, the information in say an assembly or a specific project to understand where your template files are, maybe where some library components are, where do we want to save uh, our content center files to, and so on and so forth. So that's a great read, uh, something that I highly recommend. We've already talked a little bit about the navigation tools, but there are some great tips inside of that tutorial that I recommend you going through. There are some sketch constraints, um, a little bit deeper uh, overview as to what is a parallel constraint, what is a coincident constraint, and how do those, uh, those things work. And then I want you to go ahead and go through uh, both parts one and two um, to model up a couple of different components um, utilizing various modeling techniques. Now I've went through these and uh, you get a really, really great understanding of what I feel is fundamental learning and that's manipulating work planes. We didn't do a lot of that uh, in, in our example but those two, those two tutorial examples will really give you a great, great feel for how to, how to create and manipulate work features um, which uh, again they're fundamental to a, key, a great understanding of utilizing Autodesk Inventor. Now the next tutorial that I'm going to cover is the fundamental of assemblies. So before you hop on to the, to the assemblies, we're going to go ahead and sit down and take five, maybe ten minutes uh, on assembly modeling and I'll pass along some of my uh, tips and tricks when it comes to bringing your parts into an assembly and generating the working relationships between the components. So like I said, go ahead and go through those tutorials and uh, we'll see you in a bit.